Hello and welcome to Calculus 3. Uh, starting off this course, uh, we're beginning in Chapter 11, Vectors and the Geometry of Space. Our first section is Section 11.1, .1, Vectors in the Plane. The objectives for this section are to write the component form of a vector, perform vector operations and interpret the results geometrically, write a vector as a linear combination of the standard unit vectors, and to use vectors to solve problems involving force or velocity. First, let's get to looking at the component form of a vector. Now, many quantities in geometry and physics, such as area, volume, temperature, and so on, can be characterized by a single real number scaled to appropriate units of measure. Those are called scalar quantities. For example, you tell someone how tall you are, you say you're five foot nine. Um, and the real number associated with each is called a scalar. It's a single number. Other quantities such as force or velocity and acceleration involve both magnitude and direction and cannot be characterized completely by a single real number. So we want to be able to express those using vectors. Here's an example of a vector, um, which is a directed line segment from the point P to our point Q. P is called our initial point, Q is the terminal point. It is a directed line segment beginning at P and ending at Q. The notation we use is this PQ with a little, it looks like a little arrow just above it, starting at P going to Q. And its length or its magnitude is denoted by using these double bars. How long is that, that, that vector? We use the double bars. Now, in this picture image below, we have these are all equivalent directed line segments. They are all going, heading in the same direction as the vector PQ, although their initial and terminal points are in different places on the plane, they're all equivalent directed line segments. Now the set of all those directed line segments that are equivalent to a given directed line segment, PQ, is a vector in the plane and it's denoted by this bold V, which is equal to the vector, the directed line segment from P to Q. Now when you're looking at vectors in your textbook, uh, on a test, on a homework, these vectors are usually denoted by lowercase bold face letters, such as this bold U, bold V, and bold W. However, when you're writing these by hand, we will often use the little arrows above or these caret symbols. So just be familiar with the different ways of expressing those either in typeset on the web or when you handwrite them. Here's an example. We're going to let V the bold V, be represented by the directed line segment from the point 0, 0 to the point 3, 2. On the picture here, our, our vector begins at P and ends at Q, our initial and terminal points, respectively. We're going to let U be the directed line segment beginning at the point 1, 2 and ending at the point 4, 4. We want to show that vector V and vector U are equivalent. Now, in order for those two vectors to be equivalent, they have to be the same length and they have to be going in the same direction. So to, to determine if they're the same length, we can use the distance formula, which we learned in our algebra course. So here is the distance of the vector PQ using the distance formula. We find that that distance is the square root of 13. And the vector RS has a magnitude or length of also square root of 13. So we can confirm that they are the same length. Now we want to show that they're going in the same direction. It did appear from the graph that they are going in the same direction, but you can verify that by using uh, finding their slopes. Again, that's another formula that we learned in our algebra classes. So you can find the slope from P to Q and the slope from R to S. And using those formulas, we find the slope of the vector PQ is 2 over 3 
and the slope of the vector rs is also 2 over 3. So those vectors have the same magnitude and they're going in the same direction. Therefore, u and v are equivalent vectors. Now let's talk about more about component form of a vector. This representation of v, bold vector v, is said to be in standard position. A directed line segment whose initial point is at the origin, starting right here at 0, 0, and um, can be uniquely represented by the coordinates of its terminal point Q, which has the components V1 and V2. So we can write our vector V using component form. Notice these little angle brackets here where the coordinates of Q are actually the components of the vector. Now when we think about this geometrically, V1 is how far to the right you go from the initial to the terminal. V2 is how far up you go. So those components of the vector illustrate the horizontal and vertical displacement from the initial to the terminal point, our V1, V2. And again, we're using this angle bracket notation here to express our vectors. So this is the definition of component form of a vector in the plane. You can find this definition in your textbook. Uh, briefly, V is a vector. We have initial point at the origin, terminal point at the coordinates V1, V2. Then the component form is given by V, bold V stands for vector, and the angle bracket represents a component form of the vector. Now, if the vector has component 0, 0, then we call that the zero vector. Now, if P and Q aren't in that general form where the initial point is at the origin, you can still find the components of the equivalent vector by taking the, uh, you apply this formula, the vector from P to Q has components V1, V2. Well, V1 is found by taking the Q1, that's the terminal point, X coordinate, minus P1, that's your initial point, X coordinate. Q1 minus P1 is your V1, your first component. Q2 minus P2 is your second component. Now, moreover, the distance formula, you can see that the length or magnitude of the vector can be found by taking, uh, finding the distance between the two points, or this is a nice shortcut here. The magnitude of the vector in component form is found by taking the square root of the first component squared plus the second component squared. On to vector operations. Here are some definitions for vector addition and scalar multiplication. Suppose we have two vectors, u and v. We can find the vector sum. That's simply adding the vectors together where you add the corresponding components. You can find the scalar multiple of a vector by multiplying the components by that scalar. You can find the negative of the vector by simply um, taking the opposite of each of the components, and you can also find the difference of two vectors. Here is an illustration of scalar multiplication of vector v. We start out with our vector v as the first directed line segment, and next to it we have a new vector, that's one-half v. Notice that it's going in the same direction, and it's only half the length, or half the magnitude of the original vector v. Next to that, we have two vector v's, two v. And that's a vector also going in the same direction. It's twice as long as our original vector, followed by the opposite of vector v. We see it's going in the opposite direction. It is the same length. And then finally, the last directed line segment vector is negative 3 over 2v. That's negative 1 and a half times the vector v. It's 1 and a half times as long going in the opposite direction. 